Hey guys, excuse the voice, I'm a bit sick at the moment. Um, just wanted to show you something with um, the DCA, uh, the Peak Atlas DCA 75, which does some curve tracing. You've probably seen me use this one before in other videos. You may have seen me use it before in other videos. Um, there's a good feature on this that actually shows you the basic function of a transistor, so if you're not too sure about how a transistor works, um, this might help fill in the gaps. So I'm going to put a few transistors, hook a few transistors up and do a couple of curve traces on it and um, try and make this as simple as possible for those who are new to this sort of thing. Um, so the first transistor I'm going to try is this one, it's a Russian uh, MP42B. Um, so we'll hook that up and see what sort of gain we get from that. It tells us that this transistor has a HFE of 62. I hope you can see the screen. So I haven't got um, screen capturing software installed, um, I haven't had it for a while. so. Just have to point the um, camera at the screen. Hope, hopefully, you can see. I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk about whatever important information you need to know. So that HFE is 62, um, and that's with a collector current of 5 milliamps, and the leakage is um, 0 0.07 milliamps, or that's uh, 0.07 milliamps or 70 microamp. So if we go to this curve trace option up here, which is BJT. Um, IC uh, over IB, it's going to compare the collector current against the base current. And if you know the basic function of a transistor, you'll know that a transistor is designed to amplify whatever's on the base at the collector. So we're going to be comparing, you could pretend perhaps your guitar signal at the base um, and how your guitar signal will look amplified at the collector. So back on the DCA, I'm just going to put in some um, values that I think might be sort of simple to understand. So I'm going to do 9 volts as well for VCE, so that's the supply. Um, as you know, guitar pedals use um, 9 volt supply. Uh, it's a little bit different with the DCA, but we'll just go with that. It's um, simple enough to follow. And hit start, and then it will curve trace um, those values that I've put in. So it's doing, it's taking 21 samples from 0 microamps on the base to 70, 75 microamps on the base. And then it's gonna tell us what the collector current is for each of those 21, 21 points. Um, so if I just pick an arbitrary point on the, on the graph here, let's say um, uh, the one that I've got selected right now. So I'm just gonna write that number down. So 2.717 milliamp is the collector current. So it's 2,717 microamps over 41.15 microamps. That's the other number there. You may not, you probably can't see it, but that's the two numbers that are coming up at that point on the graph. So if we plug those into our calculator, I should also mention that um, um, germanium transistors have leakage. I think this actually accounts for the leakage in those values that it tells you. So it's already included. It's already taken off from the collector current automatically. So we should just be able to whack in 2717 divided by 4115. I'm just doing some of my computer calculator on the other screen over here. You can't see it, but it doesn't matter. So the answer is 66.02. And if we go back to what it was identified at, we had a HFE of 62 at a collector current of 5 milliamp. Sorry about that, kids are going nuts in the background. It's dinner time and they tend to lose their, um, lose their mind around about this time. So it's pretty close, 66.02. This HFE value will change depending on the base current. Um, it, it will change. Some transistors don't really turn on until you start actually pumping in the, pa in the, um, uh, the power in the base or the supply voltage needs to be higher than nine volts. Um, so that's all uh, just sort of characteristics of a transistor. So if we tr let's try another one. So the one up here is 4416 4, 4, over 6373. Uh, 6, 3. So this one comes out at 69.29. Um, so it's all sort of pretty close. It's going up a little bit as we um, increase, the, um, uh, increase the base current. So let's 
compare that to another transistor now. I'm going to get a silicon low gain transistor, which is a 2N3904, which is a pretty standard low gain silicon transistor, very common. Hit the start button and it comes up at 140 HFE. So that's um, <coughs> at, with, a, with a collector current of 5 milliamps. You have to take that into context. Where is that being measured? As you can see before, as the base, as the base current is being increased, the HFE is changing, so you kind of need to know where um, that value is being is being measured. It varies a bit between transistors. Some change a lot. Some don't change. Some don't change a lot with, with when you increase um, and decrease the base current, etc. So let's go back to this, um, the curve trace, and let's check what uh, how this one will appear. Now, before I hit the start button to do the curve trace. Pause the video and ask yourself, how do you think this one's going to appear? Is it going to be, um, is it going to be on a lower angle or on a higher angle? So the answer is simple, of course. If the gain is higher, it takes less base current to get more collector current. So this should curve trace higher than the previous one because this, this line is 66, approximately. Uh, between 60 and 70 HFE and this one's around about 140 so it should actually be um, on a higher angle so let's hit start and see what happens and as you can see it's on a steeper angle there's a limit to the power handling of the DCA so it won't go over a certain height so if it kept going it would just keep going straight up like this um, but there's a limit just under five um, under five milliamps in this particular configuration that it will stop at so let's do one more and we'll pick one that's even higher so this is a 2N5088, which I'm pretty sure should be higher than 140, about 480, so it's about three times, approximately uh, four times bigger than the last one, uh, approximately. So let's go and curve trace it, and this should be much steeper than both of those, which it is. It stops short again because of the um, limit for the DCA, but you can still see um, that it's quite steep. So what we can get from these three graphs is, or from this particular curve tracing graph, is that the steeper the line, the higher the gain. And again, we can do a little test if you want to confirm it. So this green line here says there is a base current of 7.5 microamps, which is a very small amount of base current. And what we're getting out the other side on the collector is 3671 microamps. So that's 3671 microamps. So we divide 3... 1671 which is the collector current by the base current which is 7.5 and we end up with a number that is 489 so the HFE is 489 for the 2N for this particular 2N5088 and what we got before from the DCA was 479 HFE so there's not a massive difference between those two figures as you can see it changes a little bit as the as the base current increases and um, as you can see between transistors, there's quite a big difference with HFE, particularly silicon. They have a very much higher um, HFE than germanium transistors, which is one of the reasons why germanium, tr tr germanium transistors are still used. Um, uh, 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 there's other reasons as well, but that's one of the reasons why they're very low gain. So I hope you got something out of that. Show just a, just a quick demonstration showing you the relationship between the base current and the collector current. Just remember the base current is your guitar signal and is usually very small. The collector current is the output and it's usually much bigger. Um, and the, you can see the three, the, the, how, the, how the HFE of the transistor um, relates to um, your input and output of your, of your particular effect. Really handy device, the DCA75, as you can see. Um, yeah, like I said, hope you got something out of it, and thanks for watching.